I, I think I have aspects of all three cultures in me. And I think that this thing of being Chinese is very deep. Sometimes I think we are the uh, you know, cultural ambassadors uh, in the West because uh, if we could do it, other people could do the same. If they don't have a chance to see China, how about I bring China to them? So no matter across the wide travel to where, I think the most important thing is we will let people see what is the real China. I think it's deep in all of our background that there are two cultures in our life that they influence one another. Sometimes they contradict one another. I think that's exactly the point. There's so much richness that we draw from to create our work. Across divide, in English is only three words. Okay, it's simple, direct. It's much more uh, symbolic in describing our position, you know, as immigrants, uh, as a group with a particular ethnical background, you know, in a society that was increasingly multicultural. I think it has this kind of symbol symbolic meaning, and it's 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 it has some it's forceful and assertive uh, uh, when we adopt this name. We started collecting the knowing friends the, who are teachers in the United States. So we started this idea with our first initial project in the California State University Long Beach. Then we are shifted, have a group exhibit, have a conference following in the uh, University of Wisconsin, Whitewater. And then we have it this time. So I think the organization is a very um, open, flexible, and volunteer basis. So it's nice. I was actually reflecting on my own experience from Chinese artist professor to, you know, working in the United States for more than 10 years. You know, it's a long enough to reflect. And here I hear there are other people just like me you know, with uh, um, deep roots in Chinese culture and live in a Western, you know, uh, life. And uh, so I met, I went to Long Beach. We had the show, symposium. I forgot how many people, maybe 13, maybe more, yeah. It was just wonderful. Through organized activities, such as exhibitions or symposiums, so we can share our experience in teaching and in the creative studio work. And also, you know, from uh, coming together, we will see the interests that we all share. And this organization is also advocate uh, for, for our uh, identity, you know, in a very multicultural society. I think the nature of my studio practice is very much about experimentation and exploration. In every material, I believe there's great potential, both conceptually and visually, that's held inside the material. So one thing I do with material is that I'd like to transform them. And when that transformation brings something surprising and exciting, then I like to work with it. I, it's very rare for me to take something to work with it directly. So that transformation needs to happen through my hand, through my eyes, through my manipulation, and then it changes. As a female artist, I realized that my work hasn't really addressed the feminine identity or issues. And in that case, it came and I thought, just thinking about the tradition of scissors, um, it's such a wonderful tool, you can use it to cut. But when you think about tradition, when a woman needs to defend herself, the only weapon she might have is a pair of scissors. So a lot of the, the things I learned as a child in China came. And I think in Chinese culture, scissors also is seen as um, not, very, not good luck, very threatening. So I thought if I amplify that force above, and as a woman, when I sit there, I'm sitting there as a woman, not as an artist. From my simple and persistent action, perhaps I could receive and balance that. So that's the whole idea, and that's what I see as the feminine strength that's often 
overlooked in our current society. And that hovering thread, you can see it as a very Chinese kind of origin, but at the same time, it's really just about our fear in general. My paintings, as kind of intricate as they are, are created through the process. I don't uh, plan anything out. So that I basically, when I start, I don't know what I'm going to do. And the pleasure of doing the painting is discovering what it is going to turn into. It's almost like having a child, you know, like you give birth to a child, you don't know what kind of personality, and then pretty soon they begin to show who they are. And of course you have to kind of go along with who they are. You can't impose your own will on them, that doesn't work. And I think it's the same with, with um, artwork. So it's a little bit of a dialogue, and I live for the surprises. I, I basically will not stop on a painting until it gets to a point where I see something I have not seen before. I actually think that patterning and orientation has, has a lot of meaning. I think that it is, if you look at nature, in all of its microcosmic and macrocosmic formations, it's all made up of small units and patterning. And therefore, I feel like patterning, like if you go look at a garden, it's just patterning, it's just repetition of the same thing. And that somehow we connect to that very directly through our nervous system. And I feel that patterning is as able to evoke emotion in people as, you know, a picture of a person can. The uh, cultural significance, the importance of Chinese art you know, not only in China, not only in Asia, but also in the rest of the world, it's pretty evident. It's becoming a fairly strong movement and, and fairly strong um, artistic um, force throughout the world. It's becoming really very important. Uh, and there's a lot of traditional, but also contemporary issues that are being explored in Chinese art. And I think it's just another way of sort of beginning to look at the culture of China beginning to look at the history of China and try to understand, try to come to some sort of better understanding about China itself. Not only the culture, but also the history, the politics, the social aspect, everything, the media, everything that's happening in China now. So I was really excited about seeing what would be possible by bringing Chinese artists in an exhibition and really exploring that subject. started working on these demolished buildings. And this is one of the demolished buildings. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the wall left with the, a broken entrance so the people can walk through to the other side of the building. And on the surface, nothing can be recognized about those na old neighborhood, but uh, image, a ghost image left here of uh, a former leader of China. Uh, that become intriguing. So uh, it uh, reminds me, if these proletarian cultural slogans remind me the year I was growing up. Uh, but, you know, following the, these years, uh, the globalization, the global urbanization taking place, uh, when these buildings are gone, it seems like an ideology that I was taught when I was growing up about forever, this eternal belief disappeared in front of my eyes. So I, as an artist, I wanted to uh, respond to this kind of, vi uh, this kind of experience. I used uh, a very uh, tranquil and quiet, calm uh, setting. Um, and uh, myself uh, sitting, meditating uh, in this very spacious, uh, you know, space. And uh, the background image was the, uh, you know, nothing, um, nothing about tranquility, about calmness, 
about uh, meditative. It's very destructive. That slow formation of the graphics actually was from the uh, nuclear uh, bomb, you know, explosion, nuclear explosion. Um, and I put, piece those two, you know, just just to pose uh, two things together, to you know, to see how far we can push. Once you uh, recognize or uh, informed what the background image is, would you look at this meditative piece, you know, really tranquil and uh, you know, um, beautiful piece, the same way as you did? I work when I was age 16. So to me, it's a very horrible working experience because uh, the jay carving, you have to put your hands in the cold water. Uh, then you, you make sure the jay not cracked when you have a high speed towards go through carving. So uh, uh, in that time, we're working like uh, eight hours a day plus two to three hours basic training. So you're working over about 10 hours a day, six days a week. It's a very intensive working uh, experience. Uh, but in that time, I accumulating a lot of knowledge. Um, since I totally shift to the Western art making world, I totally forgot this my earlier experience. But interesting is that when I started to make art after I graduated from a graduate program, I do not have anything in my mind. I just want to make art and make something I like to make. So I started with, with the body of uh, just a monochromatic black-white drawing. Interesting is all the image, all this uh, language I use on the drawings are very much close associated with my Jay Carving experiences. I didn't realize until one of my artist friends came to my studio and she was pointing to me and saying, look, your work is very much like a, your earlier experience with Jay Carving. I was just shocked. Just looking at my art and thinking about it, it does influence a lot because I feel, you know, if you talk about art, art is a reflection of the culture and um, I think personally I, I like to delve into the past <laughs> and uh, especially I feel connected to the past. Uh, my work tends to deal with um, connection between generations. Uh, I think, you know, Confucius really emphasized that so I think it's an, Influenced me directly in that sense. Um, so I, in my work, I tend to do with, uh, you know, the sense of self, but my, myself, not not just only me, but it's my ancestor and my kid, my grandkid, that kind of connection. I see myself as, as that more than just myself. Okay, that's responsibility. I mean, really, that's the Asian thing, right? We want to develop this project as uh, uh, several components. One is the exhibition, and also we would uh, like to invite several artists uh, to do the presentation along with the exhibit. Another part of the project is uh, we want to develop a documentary film to interview different artists and uh, the artists uh, will explain their idea and their work so the audience will be better understand what the ideas behind their work. Another part of this project is to develop a, a digital catalog to show every artist's work and their introductions. Uh, as art historians, I'm always fascinated with contemporary Chinese art. So when this opportunity comes to me, I'm extremely excited. And this is a great opportunity for my students to see the Chinese art from the first-hand experience. And also, it will give me the opportunity to know a more Chinese contemporary artist and who live in the United States. I have changed a lot. I think it's very different. I can, cannot imagine my work will be receiving recent uh, status and, and a wide uh, exhibition uh, record if uh, I'm not come to the United States. Uh, that's a change my, entirely change my vision, change my point of view, and start to look at myself differently, start to have much more my personal concept um, compared to many years ago. I was just really a good student trying to follow my teacher's instruction, trying to be solid in um, uh, foundation. I thought I'm almost not give a uh, power to express myself if I don't have foundation. 
right now I feel um, actually start to be liberating myself. Many of my uh, viewers and collectors, they feel that you know, my work start to be liberating almost from jail. Like, you know, from like my previous training, almost like become a prison, like to, to limit some of my thing and uh, my uh, creativity. So I start to be gradually liberating my creativity. I didn't have that much education due to the Cultural Revolution because all schools shut down. Uh, even though when the school reopened, but it was every day is about stealing Chairman Mao's quotation about the Cultural Revolutionary Cultural Revolution's policy. Uh, I had no, virtually no education. So when I worked in the countryside, uh, I didn't feel that I have a future. One day, my mother said, "You know, wait at home." There is someone is coming here, you know, to pick you up, uh, to introduce you to a teacher. So I was waiting there, and this person came, knocked the door, and introduced him to me. So I ride, you know, we rode bicycle to uh, Chinese fine art gallery, Zhongguo Meishu Guan. And then there is come a young man is coming down, <laughs> and he's Chen Yifei. Uh, Chen Yifei at that time was only 26 years old. Uh, and then he took us in. When I went into the, you know, the Chinese art gallery, and I see all the large paintings on the floor there, and the artist, you know, was sitting there and preparing for this ex exhibition. And then I thought about this is what I want to do. <laughs> My father actually was relatively supportive. My mother actually said to me, she said, "Amy, you can't be an artist. We're not rich enough." <laughs> Because she understood that, you know, it's um, traditionally a uh, occupation for people who are wealthy and uh, don't need to earn their own money. But, um, you know, I think because I feel that if I had grown up in Taiwan or even if I had grown up in Brazil, I would not be an artist. I feel that it is actually uniquely the opportunities that the United States offered that I could become an artist. So even though I had my entire art education here in the United States, and I never even studied Asian art, like, like Asian art history, only Western art, that when I actually started painting, my sensibility was not Western, that even though I knew all of the history and permutations, I found myself doing things that um, I began to discover were uniquely Asian. And the porcelain is very important material. In China, people use them uh, to creating different dinnerware, and they use them every day. In my work, I use the traditional Chinese blue pattern prints that normally shows on the dinnerware. I put those pattern on those abstract shape and uh, just want to combine the contemporary and the traditional concept together. In recent years, I've been involved in artistic data visualization type of project uh, quite a bit. And uh, uh, I had the opportunity to work with the Data Resource Center in Syracuse. So I have access to a large amount of uh, real federal data. And so I decided to do something with it. My first series was the one I exhibited in the previous Across the Divide. Uh, it's a data visualization project, but the data, they are crime. Um, Basically, they are crime statistics of each of the states. My ultimate goal will be uh, generate uh, uh, animation. So it's kind of experimental data visualization animation. There are some differences. I think it's more related to the uh, cultural you know, differences between uh, China and America. Uh, this culture uh, encourages people to try something new, different. Uh, I think the, the highlight or the main characteristics I, I see in my American students is the uh, individuality and um, I think they are very independent and uh, very brave to try new things, new concepts. And uh, uh, on the other hand, 
Chinese students, they are more, uh, you know, respect uh, the instructions and uh, uh, obey the rules. And uh, they, they are very good students. And uh, they listen to the, uh, you know, what you say, what you teach them. And uh, they could be working very hard. Uh, to you know, really bring out the uh, the, the result. Um, I came from a very strong foundation training background, and my student has a really active sort of uh, idea approach, but they are missing foundation course. So on my teaching curriculum, um, I try to combine East and the West and teaching philosophy together, and I try to uh, combine with a very disciplinary foundation training then also give them enough space and freedom to expand their idea. So to me, I think a concept and a technical skill is a two inseparable components. A student should have a both. You do not criticize a student work uh, that harshly, which at the very beginning, it took me a little while to get used to because in China, it's completely different. Uh, in China, people uh, your professor is always very critical of your work. If you get an OK, then that's like a, a great. Uh, but here in America, uh, if you say somebody's work is OK, it's like, a, OK, that's, uh, that person going to get mad at you. I feel that as a teacher, it's very important to be a working artist. I feel that teachers who kind of leave their art but continue teaching are not as good as the teachers who are still involved. They don't bring as much to the classroom. They, they themselves don't have that connection and passion anymore. So, um, you know, I, I accept the fact that I have two full-time jobs. I just accept that. As art professor coming from Chinese origin, I feel like we have a lot more to offer because we come from a different culture background. We went through this cross-cultural experience and those are perspectives that's really useful and meaningful for our students, especially looking at the current time. The population in all universities are becoming more and more diverse. A lot of students travel from different parts of the world, and I feel like we understand them more, therefore I can provide more support and um, guidance for their creative process. As we are a teacher, it's like we are setting up like a room model, right? If we care, uh, what the Chinese culture, you know, influence we have and uh, care about it and, and uh, want to understand how that bring uh, us into a very different uh, kind of realm in terms of creative practice because of dual culture background. I think by doing so, recognize this unique community that would influence our um, students that to uh, value and uh, respect uh, our roots. I think it's really exciting. I, I appreciate all the different views, all the different types of media used in, by the artists in the exhibition, because I think they're really expressing a lot of their own uh, identity as um, Chinese artists, as, but also as, as human beings who are living you know, um, between the two cultures. Really, they have this background in China, but they're also experiencing this American culture, which is uh, quite a bit different sometimes. There are some similarities, but it's such a, uh, a variety and, and diverse sense of, of cultural identity and, and the sort of cultural experience that I think what's really exciting about the exhibition is seeing how their own traditions, their own understandings of their own culture, and then sort of creating that to be understood or, or creating it so that it can be understood by an American audience. I think that's, that's a, a great possibility for us. In my school, uh, actually, we, we cannot see it's very, very open mind. We live in Wisconsin, majority people are white. Uh, so the show does make a very good feedback. First is the people start to believe we do have contemporary art. Because when we talk about the Chinese art, they always think about you know brush painting and green a blue mountain like a kind of painting or calligraphy, they don't realize we have contemporary art and contemporary Chinese art. So I, I think Cross Divide is kind of a way to uh, bring this concept to the audience. So if you come here, you really should uh, uh, be prepared. Um, many years of the hard working 
and, um, and you know, research for yourself, learning, like, you know, observing as a sponge to the new information and technology. And I think eventually whatever you have uh, made the effort it will be repaid back to you and you will be happy because you become a creative person. Uh, first, uh, don't expect the U.S. to be super modern. <laughs> Uh, when I first got here, I feel, oh, the building looks so much older than buildings in China. Um, so also be prepared to have a kind of lonely life. And you will not find so many friends just immediately as the way you, you have in China. And uh, next is to find the good advisor. And also, at the same time, be in charge of your own life. It's something and you really can benefit when you had a chance to work with the Western uh, educator teachers. So I really encourage people who are be able to come. Definitely it's a great experience for their life. And if you really love art, you should pursue it and you have to persevere. And you probably have to accept the fact that you're going to have for the level of the education you are probably going to have, your income will not be equal to that, relatively speaking. But your life will be, but that won't matter to you if you're passionate about what you do. You know, it's, your life will be rich in other ways. And m money isn't everything. Because ultimately you live in one culture and you see things have to be done this way. And also you move to another culture, things have been but done completely different and it's acceptable and it's okay. So it makes you realize that there's really no absolute because let's say you grew up in a Buddhist country and all your life you think, you know, Buddha save everybody, take care of everybody. Also you came to this Western country a lot, most were Christian and they have the same belief but in something totally different. And also suddenly you question Buddhism, you question Christian, is that, is that real? So it, you just tend to question everything and, and nothing, make you realize that nothing is absolute. I would call it um, bridging the cultural difference instead of trying to point to how different we are. And I do think in my creative work, I'm more and more attracted to that. I think at the very beginning, of course, we're first looking at the difference. But at this stage, I see that it's so much more meaningful to talk about, you think we're different, we're not that different. I mean, I know I'll always be Chinese. It doesn't matter what citizenship I have because it's in my bones. What I learned from this project, if your project, the idea is good, it's really, you know, solid and substantial, you know, um, and you let it go if you concentrate on that and you can't, cannot really worry about your own personal interests that much. And you really you put yourself into that and other people see and they will give you their, their support. <laughs>